The world's most expensive coffee costs about $30 to $100 a cup. It varies from place to place, but the price is not the only thing that attracts the enthusiastic coffee drinkers. It's actually the unconventional production process. You see, coffee luwak, or also known as civet coffee, is made from cherries that were consumed and partially digested by wild civet cats. So yeah, the world's most expensive coffee that you can buy right now is made from shit. With one pound costing a whopping $1,300, that's roughly $600 for a kilogram. Which is cool and all, but to answer the question of how one even discovers something like this, we need to take a brief look at Indonesia's history. Late 1600s, the Dutch colony, also known as the Dutch East Indies, consisted of what is now Indonesia. Around that time, coffee plants, most probably smuggled from Yemen, made its way to the archipelago with the Dutch traders and the colonists, Java being one of their first islands to grow coffee. Dutch plantations by 1699 gave rise to a network of coffee plantation near the city, and within a decade, Java was already exporting coffee on a large scale, solidifying its position as a world leader in coffee production and the go-to choice for European coffee lovers. However, around the early 1800s, the Dutch's involvement in the Pandri War and the Java War was starting to take a toll on their economy, and the cost of keeping the Dutch army at the war took them to near bankruptcy. And to counter this, the Dutch implemented the cultivation system in Java, which was a systematic reconstruction of the economy with its focus mainly being on agriculture. Instead of doubling down on land tax, the government decided to take 20% of the land for plantation, mainly for coffee since Java already had a strong foothold in the coffee market. In reality, they used more than just 20% of the land for enforced planting, with some sources claiming it to be nearly 100%. This in turn led to a famine due to there being no land for food crops for the natives, and to ensure maximum profit from the crops, the farmers and the natives were not allowed to consume any of it. By this time, coffee was very well known and loved by the natives in Java. I mean, if in today's time an unpaid intern can go from not liking coffee to being addicted to it in less than six months, Imagine what 100 years would do to a population that was also its biggest exporter. It would soon be discovered that coffee beans were left partially digested in civet feces. Civets being native to Indonesia, they were almost everywhere. Those beans were later extracted, washed, dried, and roasted to make coffee by the plantation workers. Soon, it became a thing on its own due to its distinct taste, which is said to be smooth compared to the coffee harvested from the plantations. The demand for civet coffee would only increase by the 1900s. Now, it's one of the most expensive coffees you can buy. And one of the reasons for its amazing smooth taste is because civets are just simply better at picking coffee cherries than we are. No, really. They used to roam free in coffee plantations and hence would have access to a variety of different cherries and not having to edit videos for a living, they would usually have all day to pick and choose the cherries they deemed fit for their cup. But. Or civets smell plumpy, juicy cherries, we smell profit. So, here's how an ideal cup of civet coffee is made. Basically, the wild civets gobble up the nice and plumpy coffee cherries, and as they make their way through its digestive tract, it goes through the normal digestion process, where enzymes and gastric juices break down some of the beans' proteins and caffeine, potentially contributing to the smoother, less bitter taste. Following this process, the beans then emerge out of the civet covered in while less desirable stuff, these are then collected and hand-washed, making sure that they are properly sanitized and ready for roasting. After this, they follow the usual roasting and brewing process, really. There's no nothing special going on behind the scene after this process. The taste of this coffee seems to differ a lot from person to person. Some say it's smooth, while others find it chocolatey. This unconventional method of production and the hefty price tag has contributed to its massive popularity in the market. And because of this, new plantations were constructed specifically for producing civet coffee beans. But it really got its popularity in the West during the 1990s. See, Tony Wilde was the first person to import the coffee to the UK in 1991. It was only just a kilogram, and instead of trying to sell it, he took the story to the local newspaper and radios in Yorkshire, thinking they might be interested in its off-putting origin. It later proved to be much more bigger than that, drawing attention of local news and TV and radio. If you've been in the market for some coffee luwak now, you've probably come across the term 
ethically sourced, where brands try to make it very clear that the coffee you're going to purchase from them is 100% ethically sourced and no civets are harmed in the production. This is important because of the surge in popularity, the market has seen a massive increase in demand. This basically means that collecting civet poop manually in an area that spans hundreds of acres is simply not efficient enough. And so most of the coffee Luwak produced now comes from civets confined to cages on traditional coffee plantations. According to the paper published by the Oxford University's Wildlife Conservation Research Unit, the living conditions of these caged civets were abysmal. Some of these cages were literally the tiniest, said one of the researchers involved in the study. We would call them rabbit hutches. They're absolutely soaked through with urine and droppings all over the place. The civets found in these plantations were malnourished, with some being very thin from the lack of a proper diet and weak due to their limited movement. According to an investigation led by PETA Asia, wild civets are kept in these cages for at least three years before being released back into the wild. This long period of confinement and inadequate nutrition causes them to lose their fur and deteriorate their health to the point where it's no longer beneficial to keep them in the production line. So how do you know if the bag you're buying contains beans that were sourced from wild civets or the ones caged in the plantations? Well, there is actually no way to tell, really. Many researchers and investigations conducted throughout the years have revealed that the labels don't provide an accurate reflection of how the coffee was produced, as in most cases, coffee from caged civets end up being labeled as wild civet coffees outside of Indonesia. Coming back to the PETA investigation I mentioned before, farmers told the investigators that it would be nearly impossible to produce exclusively wild source civet coffee and that the industry knowingly mislabels coffee from captive animals as wild source. Now, it's generally advised to not buy coffee luwak at all, because it's very likely to be sourced from caged civet plantations regardless of the labels. 